Hello, this is Vampire. Um, so for today's video, I want to answer some of the questions that I've gotten from you guys in, in the comment section. So uh, number one was basically uh, what kind of weapon do I think is good for uh, self-defense on the street? That That's the general idea. And, um, you know, what do I think is good? What do I think is effective for the street? Um, it, that's a tricky thing because I think it really depends on the person and um, depends on the person because of so many factors, not just one factor, but many, a multitude of factors. You know, your everyday environment, where you live, where you go to work, you know, uh, what your idea is of what is effective or what works, uh, how important is convenience, you know, uh, th this kind of thing. So obviously, if you're a professional and you're wearing like, you know, real nice a suit and tie and stuff and to be carrying a combat folder may not be good and, and you could ruin your pants maybe. So, I mean, it, it depends, right? Um, and I look at myself, what I was carrying 10 years ago compared to what I was carrying five years ago is totally different. And what I'm carrying today is also, once again, very different from five years ago. What I've noticed, just me personally, and this could be different from other people, is that my I start off with a, you know with a certain type of knife, a folding knife, and then you know at, at some points I dabbled with a fixed blade or or a neck knife or or whatnot. But uh, what I've noticed recently is the size of the knife that I'm carrying, the blade that I'm carrying has gotten smaller and smaller and smaller. And now to the point where it's basically a razor blade to the point where it's one of those very minimalistic razor blades. And I feel very, very comfortable with that. And it works extremely well with my EDC. And I use it pretty much every day uh, for, for various things that I personally do that maybe other people don't do. But in my life, uh, I use the razor blade uh, a lot when, when I'm uh, uh, doing stuff with uh, custom action figures and stuff like that. It, it comes into play a lot. So I'm, I'm using it uh, every day, like I said, and, and it works really good with my EDC package. So that's what I feel very comfortable walking around with. As, as of now, and uh, in a self-defense situation, I haven't been in one recently where, or where I'm like alarmed or something. That hasn't happened recently. Uh, thankfully, I haven't had to go to a downtown or, or a bad side of the, the neighborhood or, or something like that. Uh, but, you know, it, when that happens, I may change my mind. I may feel like, you know what, um, and I want something more heavy duty. And usually, uh, if I am going into a certain part of town, I, I'll i change it right away. But I haven't been in a situation where I have a very, very minimalistic razor blade and then I am in a potential self-defense situation. It's in my hand and I'm going, man, this is just not going to work. I, I haven't been in that situation. Um, as of now, with the training and stuff, I have... What, what's really helped is over the years, I've gotten more and more comfortable training with and using smaller blades. So that was important. Once I was able, because there was a time where it just, it didn't make sense. It didn't work. I would use a smaller blade and then it was like, this doesn't work. I mean, it, in theory, on paper it does, but then in real life, when I'm trying to actually make combat force contact onto something, it didn't work. So, uh, yeah. Uh, but then I was able to figure that out for, for me, for myself and my situation and the techniques that I use. And then after that, like I said, I've, I've gotten in that direction and that works out for me. So what I'm trying to say is it depends, you know, if someone said to me, my daughter is going to go off to college, what do you recommend for her? You know, is she afraid of knives? Then, you know, even if I think a knife is the greatest thing in the world, which, you know, I, I really like knives, it might not be good for her. If she's going to be like, ew, a knife, then then that's the wrong thing to recommend to her. Then in, in her case, pepper spray might be better, but then maybe she may not like that either. Then, then maybe uh, a tactical flashlight, it just, it depends, you know. So 
Uh, and, and that's part of that is the training and the experience and figuring out what works for you, what you're comfortable with. And that may take some time, you know, so she would have to try out different things and the uh, daddy will have to walk her through that and, and try it. And, and if she can't, you know, uh, pepper spray you, how is she supposed to pepper spray the bad guy in uh, a pinch? under pressure, under stress. So, you know, you, you want her to have that kind of experience and stuff. So, you know, that, that's what I, uh, you know, I, I recommend to, to practice and to test things out a little bit. You don't have to go extreme, but at least test things out, out a little bit, you know? So, uh, you, you don't have to necessarily go, okay, just pepper spray me in the face. You know, you don't have to do it like that. You could be wearing a mask or whatever, but she still needs to aim and, and, you know, you still need to kind of like put some pressure in the backyard and, and be like, okay, I'm going to walk towards you. So you got to pull it out and aim and spray me in this area within a certain amount of time. If not, I will, you know, grab a hold of you. So within that time, you got to do it, you know, just that kind of practice, you know, uh, I think it would be tremendously beneficial, you know, and the more the better. But anyway... Uh, so let, let me move on to the next question, okay? Um, let's see. The next question had to do with uh, this person. He was training with uh, the reverse grip, right? And uh, they, they said they had trained with the reverse grip. So this is knife. So the knife in the reverse grip for some time. And then uh, they just found out that this was not good uh, at all for them in uh, long range so they were like i wasted my time and and they're basically asking me what do i think about that and um okay um so first of all the system that i teach we we train in all grips uh i believe it's important to to get familiar with many many different kinds of grips and and by all look it's not quantity over quality so definitely quality is more important but you don't want to be ignorant of the other grips. And so what I generally start people off with is the, is the four general grips, which is the standard, the reverse, and then um, th those are the main two. And then we have the, the mantis grip and the ripper grip. Uh, the ripper grip, the, the blade edge is facing towards you. And then for the mantis grip, the blade edge, once again, is facing towards you. So... It uh, makes it slightly different from normal reverse grip. But anyway, uh, so those are the main four grips that I, I try to get people to start off with. So so they, they practice with the four grips and, and they go, okay, so I got to get to kind of know these four grips. So that tells them not to just stay with one grip. You know, uh, it's okay to have a specialty, but you don't want to be limit yourself just to that. So uh with the reverse grip, like, okay, each grip has its own characteristics. So is the reverse grip not as good as the standard grip in long range? Yeah, I, I agree. I, and, and I would say that the standard grip is not as good as the reverse grip in close range. Okay. And there's many reasons for that. And, and you guys should ex experience that and discover that for your, for yourself. Uh, if you care to know, I have talked about that many times and I've made videos on it many, many times and I could, I could share with you my point of views on that, you know. Um, that being said, like uh, unless you go up against somebody and uh, they're like really, really good with the uh, standard grip and they know how to use it in long range effectively, like they're, that's their specialty and they're really good at it. Um, you're probably not, it probably doesn't make a difference, honestly, if you're using standard or, or reverse. The main difference there is not the length. A lot of people think it is the reach difference, but in, um, like, like I said, unless you got like a fencing background and, and you know how to really, really use the reach to your advantage, or you're, you're really good at boxing, kickboxing, and you know, you're, you're good at striking and you know how to use range really, really well. It, it's it's not going to matter, you know. I, I really don't think so. What is matters more than that, what I think immediately comes to play is comfort level. A lot of people are just, they're just not articulate with reverse grip. They're very awkward with it. I've seen some instructors teaching reverse grip and they look very, very awkward. 
So that just tells me they don't have enough reps. So I think that is a much more substantial than being able to use your reach or not to an, to an advantage. Because if two people are really going at it, like two people fighting, their their range and their idea of reach and range sucks. If you're talking about professional fighters and you watch the reach and, and how they use range and stuff, yeah, at that level, it makes a difference. So if you're going up against, you know, so unless it's something really extreme, like your opponent is six foot four and you're like five foot eight or something, and then you guys are, are fighting like that, unless it's something like that, reach, range, I, I think under the pressure, you're holding a knife. I don't think it's as big of a deal. Now, you may disagree with me, or maybe you're good. You're you're at the level where you're beyond that, you know? But as a guy who has taught students and, and had them spar and stuff, you know, um, and, and I'm not saying that I know all the answers or, or my case is 100% right. I just feel like it's the higher percentage that um, range is not as priority as how people are more awkward with with reverse grip. I think that's a much bigger factor and a more immediate factor. So anyway, that's it for now. I hope this helps. Thank you for watching and take care, folks.